My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. Uh, I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. But we, we try to be very clear eyed about what the downside case is and the work that we have to do to mitigate that. And now uh, for some introductory remarks. Too often, we have seen what happens when technology outpaces regulation. The unbridled exploitation of personal data, the proliferation of disinformation, and the deepening of societal inequalities. We have seen how algorithmic biases can perpetuate discrimination and prejudice and how the lack of transparency can undermine public trust. This is not the future we want. If you were listening from home, you might have thought that voice was mine, but in fact, that voice was not mine. The words were not mine. And the audio was an AI voice cloning software trained on my floor speeches. The remarks were written by chat GPT. They are no longer fantasies of science fiction. They are real and present. The promises of curing cancer or developing new understandings of physics and biology or modeling climate and weather, all very encouraging and hopeful, but we also know the potential harms. And we've seen them already, weaponized disinformation, housing discrimination, harassment of women and impersonation fraud, voice cloning, uh, deep fakes. These are the potential risks, despite the other rewards. And for me, perhaps the biggest nightmare is the looming new industrial revolution, the displacement of millions of workers, the loss of huge numbers of jobs, the need to prepare for this new industrial revolution in skill training. Mr. Altman, we're going to begin with you, if that's okay. My name is Sam Altman. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of OpenAI. OpenAI was founded on the belief that, that artificial intelligence has the potential to improve nearly every aspect of our lives, but also that it creates serious risks we have to work together to manage. We're here because people love this technology. We think it can be a printing press moment. We have to work together to make it so. OpenAI is an unusual company, and we set it up that way because AI is an unusual technology. We are governed by a nonprofit, and our activities are driven by our mission and our charter, which commit us to working to ensure that the broad distribution of the benefits of AI and to maximizing the safety of AI systems. We are working to build tools that one day can help us make new discoveries and address some of humanity's biggest challenges, like climate change and curing cancer. Our current systems aren't yet capable of doing these things, but it has been immensely gratifying to watch many people around the world get so much value from what these systems can already do today. We love seeing people use our tools to create, to learn, to be more productive. We're very optimistic that there are going to be fantastic jobs in the future and that current jobs can get much better. We also love seeing what developers are doing to improve lives. For example, Be My Eyes used our new multimodal technology in GPT-4 to help visually impaired individuals navigate their environment. We believe that the benefits of the tools we have deployed so far vastly outweigh the risks, but ensuring their safety is vital to our work, and we make significant efforts to ensure that safety is built into our systems at all levels. Before releasing any new system, OpenAI conducts extensive testing, engages external experts for detailed reviews and independent audits, improves the model's behavior, and implements robust safety and monitoring systems. Before we released GPT-4, our latest model, we spent over six months conducting extensive evaluations, external red teaming, and dangerous capability testing. We are proud of the progress that we made. GPT-4 is more likely to respond helpfully and truthfully and refuse harmful requests than any other widely deployed model of similar capability. However, 
we think that regulatory intervention by governments will be critical to mitigate the risks of increasingly powerful models. For example, the US government might consider a combination of licensing and testing requirements for development and release of AI models above a threshold of capabilities. There are several other areas I mentioned in my written testimony where I believe that companies like ours can partner with governments, including ensuring that the most powerful AI models adhere to a set of safety requirements, facilitating processes to develop and update safety measures, and examining opportunities for global coordination. And as you mentioned, uh, I think it's important that companies have their own responsibility here, no matter what Congress does. This is a remarkable time to be working on artificial intelligence. But as this technology advances, we understand that people are anxious about how it could change the way we live. We are too. But we believe that we can and must work together to identify and manage the potential downsides so that we can all enjoy the tremendous upsides. It is essential that powerful AI is developed with democratic values in mind, and this means that US leadership is critical. I believe that we will be able to mitigate the risks in front of us and really capitalize on this technology's potential to grow the US economy and the world's, and I look forward to working with you all to meet this moment, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Uh, I alluded in my uh, opening remarks to the, the jobs issue, the economic effects on employment. Uh, I think you have said, uh, in fact, and I'm going to quote, development of superhuman machine intelligence is probably the greatest threat to the continued existence of humanity. Uh, let me ask you uh, what your biggest nightmare is and whether you share that concern. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. Uh, I think that could happen in a lot of different ways. It's why we started the company. Um, it's a big part of why I'm here today uh, and why we've been here in the past and, and we've been able to spend some time with you. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong, uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening, but we, we try to be very clear-eyed about what the downside case is and the work that we have to do to mitigate that. So it's one of my areas of greatest concern, the, 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 the more general ability of these models to manipulate, to persuade, uh, to provide sort of one-on-one -on -one, uh, you know, interactive disinformation. Uh, I think this is a significant area of concern. I think there's a, lot, there's a lot of policies that companies can voluntarily adopt, and I'm happy to talk about what we do there. Um, I do think some regulation would be quite wise on this topic. So I'm nervous about it. I think people are able to adapt quite quickly. Uh, when Photoshop came onto the scene a long time ago, you know, for a while people were really quite fooled by Photoshopped images and then pretty quickly developed uh, an understanding that images might be Photoshopped. Uh, this will be like that, but on steroids. And the, the interactivity... Um, the ability to really model, predict humans well, as you talked about, uh, I think is going to require a combination of companies doing the right thing, regulation, and public education.